Hey everybody, what's up? Cedric and Cedric here, CR Wrestling Commentary. And we will be reviewing New Japan Pro Wrestling's G1 Climax 34 Day 3. And this was this this one by and large was better than the first two days. By and large. But there was some hiccups here and there. But let's let's get into B block action. T today we got blocks that show up on the thing. So we start off with Konosuke Takeshita versus Jeff Cobb. And opening part, Cobb launched Konosuke into the air. And that was from the corner to the middle of the ring. It was awesome. It, Konosuke landed like, what the hell just happened to me? Yes. <laughs> Konosuke dove with a topic on Hiro and Cobb did not have to move to catch him. <laughs> Cobb hit a super gut wrench suplex that hurt Konosuke's shoulder. And that's a legit hurt. That's legit. I don't know how bad it's hurt. It wasn't popped out. But they stayed away from the shoulder. And Konosuke made sure to do his best not to fall on it. And he favored it the rest of the match. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's, he, he, he sold it. So I'm thinking that was real because nothing in the program was to work the arm anyway. Konosuke hit an avalanche suplex, and from the impact alone, Cobb and the ref bounced off the mat. The, the, the ref bounced off his feet and fell. He had no choice. There was nothing he could do about it. I gotta be honest, it was a thing of beauty though. This, it, it was. <laughs> it long delay and crash, it was, Chef's kiss on that one. You get a, a, a strong indication. You can see it a little in AEW, but you get a stronger indication, stronger uh, demonstration. I use strong too many times. But a stronger <laughs> demonstration of how strong Konosuke is. He's a strong dude. Yes, he's, he's, he's a powerhouse. He's, he's young, he knows what he's doing, and he's accurate. He's, he's home. Mm -hmm. He's not like this in AEW. Nope. Then again, they don't use them right anyway. Got nothing so, to work with. So after some serious heavy shots and amazing displays of power and grace, Takeshita wins with a spinning high angle falcon arrow hold for the pin. And I love how he does this move. I was like, he hit this on Cobb like this. Everyone else should be a piece of cake. He hit the blue thunder bomb on Cobb. Yes. And it was beautiful. Like always. It, it's like Cobb didn't weigh anything more than anyone else. Takeshita is is epic. He's epic. I get this you to see him in his true form and I'm enjoying it. Mm -hmm. I'm not the the thought that he came from DDT Pro annoys me. I'm just not all about that. Um But he obviously knows his craft. Yep. If y'all hear any squealing, that's that's our daughter in the back playing Roblox or something. Um, let's see. So next we get A block action. Callum Newman versus Zack Saber Jr. This match didn't do it for us. Mm. It was an okay match. They didn't touch each other early on with boot kicks. I mean, literally they kept missing. Or the touches were so light you wonder if they even did anything. They did a nice rebounding running spot for Newman. You know, and that, they, they went well. You know, but there's a lot of strikes that they just didn't touch on and whatnot. Once the pro wrestling started, though, Zach fell into his element. Newman hit a few good moves, such as the Yoshi Tonic and a counter deadlift powerbomb, which was really good. But Zach scored the surrender victory with a heel hook. I mean, coming into it, it's like... All right, Zach's going to win this. No question whatsoever. And if he hadn't have won, it, it would have been a genuine upset. Yep. It's just... It would look bad. It, would look, it wouldn't look real. It just, you know, Callum isn't any real competition. and Not for... Not for Zach. Yeah. And Zach had to do some of Callum's stuff which did not come across good. And once they slipped into, you know, an actual wrestling match, like Cedric just said, then it looked better. And Zach was in his element. And 
the Callum had no choice but to, you know, give in. Yep, because once Zach got him on the mat and started twisting and turning, and it's like, what, what are you doing to me? Mm -hmm. Which is what Cedra had uh, dubbed at that point. Once he starts doing that, it's basically, what are you doing to me? What are you doing to me? Yep. It's like, and once I settle, you, you, you'll be done. Uh -huh. And then he transitions so quickly. You're trying to uh, uh, cope with the pain that he's inflicting, and he changes the pain. Yep. There's no, there's no adjustment period for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I like that. Uh, next, we got A block action. Takagi Shingo versus Great Khan. Now, I'm going I'm, to I'm just say this. This match here should have been better. By all marks, this should have been a much better match than what we got. Um, they did well. It's not a horrible thing. I just know what both can do, just like Cedra. Mm -hmm. And we know that you only saw 10% of them. We know what they can really do. They could have outshined the next matches with no problem. They should have been the main event. Yeah. But on my notes, if the saying is true that you're only as good as your last match, then Shingo has no chance of winning. Ha <laughs> ha. We get that that saying is about spectator perspective, and that's where we're coming from. Both men are equal with Okan being one to match anyone's style and seemingly surpass it. They both got their stuff in, but Okan was the defense master to avoid the sliding bomber. I'm calling it that because he just loves bomber, just loves it. That's what, it, that's what the man calls it. He calls it the sliding bomber. In the corner bomber. In the corner the bomber. Pumping bomber. Yeah. It it took two pumping bombers, but Takagi got the pin at the last moment via pinfall. And maybe next time Great Okan can get a win over the man he had the job to for so long as a young lion. Maybe. Cause I was kinda hoping on that. I was like I was like, man, he was losing to him so much them years ago and now he's up there in the G1 with him and stuff I was like man maybe he'll get that win not this not this year not this time no so next we got A block action oh man Shota Umino versus Gabe Kidd and I had to note Gabe Kidd has an expression and aura that screams he's going to go into business for himself and hurt someone I like that he looks like somebody that is hungry he needs to wrestle he needs to win and it's all business It's personal business I need money and without money I can't eat I'm gonna eat that's how he look I'm gonna eat and then he starts wrestling <laughs> and I, I know I said they I had to know they call Shota the roughneck he was like they call what and we had to rewind it and Cedra tears it all down by simply describing Shota Umino. They call him the rough net. Shota is out there with bleach blonde hair, white pants that are a bright pink at the top, and then they as they filter down, the gradient transitions to white with frilly things on the white on the on the side, frilly little white fringes. There's nothing rough about any of that. Nothing rough about his neck. Is that what a rough neck? What do you? And then of course he's got a shooter across his butt. Because for whatever reason, Goon dubbed him that, and he is still stuck on everything that Goon, quote unquote, gifted him with, which is why he still does the Death Rider. Whatever that truly is, is. supposed to look like. I had to note, Umino tries to do his drop kicks like Okada. He used to do them better on the level of wrestlers like Paul Roma, Kurt Henning, and Bob Holly. And now, and I'm like, and mm, okay, I, something I wanted to say, but it's at it's at the bottom. Um, at points, they fire up. Both of them fire up with very loud forearms. As sometimes I can see them slapping their own abdomen or something like that. Um, and but that was roughly it. This match was this match is for the strike lovers out there, but with very sparse suplexing and pro wrestling, very sparse. Like a forest of three trees. Okay. And 
I had to note, Shota has a habit of clapping just before doing any strong or big move. Yeah. He's got a habit of that. But after a long match, Kid uses the Lion Tamer, which he used later on, which made sense. But then he finished off with the Dangerous Queen Bomb to get the pin. And that, that was the end of that match. Yeah. Then we get to the more or less kind of ish Toru Yano, Tor, Toru Yano type match. So we got A Block, Evil versus Sonata. Oh yeah, lots of some silly stuff. And yeah, I would be talking for about eight minutes trying to get through that if I went blow by blow. Mm -hmm. um, Sonata adorns the House of Torture shirt to make peace with his old faction mate. Evil welcomes him and as a show of kinship, he wants Sonata to lay down and get pinned. So with one finger. Well, allegedly. Uh huh. So I mean, that was that's that's what ELP said on commentary. But, that was, yeah. But when he covered him, it went with one finger. He tried to cover him, and Sonata rolled him up real quick, but didn't get the three because you know you can't make your contenders look that weak. Um. Damn. Okay. Evil sends Sonata into the railing, knocking over the ringside area and whatnot. So that was a mess, and as CJ had yet to notice it, that uh, Sonata was talking to whoever else was knocked over. Yeah, because uh, Evil seems to knock over the same dude with his opponent every show. So he slammed the Sonata into the barricade. The barricade hit a little narrow table the dude is sitting at, and they all go falling down. Okay, so... Sonata's kind of arm is woven through the barricade. They're getting the dude set back up his table, his computer, all that stuff. But I'm like, okay, why isn't Sonata getting up? He, and he's, he's trying to make it look like his arm is stuck. I'm like, y your arm isn't stuck. All you got to do is just pull it through. And what I realized is that he was talking to the dude who got knocked over again because moments later, uh, maybe a minute, a minute and a half later, Sonata gets back up, gets on the apron. Evil does something, hits Sonata, not Sonata, back into the other uh, barricade. Barricade hits the dude, he falls over again. Yep. And once you cover it, Sonata finally goes after Dick, throwing him into the railing. Later on, after things got heavy, Evil crushes the ref in the corner, and that was a hoopla of, of, of kind of, it was, it was fun and it looked reasonable. I liked it. Um, but Dick goes into the ring and he gets revenge on Sonata, attacking him. Evil with the chair, he missed with missed Sonata, who got the chair and RVD'd it with a drop kick into Evil. So Sonata lands a shining wizard later on and aids the ref into the ring because he wants to win. And Evil uses the ref as a distraction to low blow Sonata, who gets equal revenge as the ref slowly recovers from more hijinks. By hook and by crook, they both got their stuff in. They did all their moves. They did. So now they hit the STO. So Okariabri and knocks Dick Togo off the apron and then hits the rear shining wizard evil with a Ric Flair special, that back leg kick to the to the, the balls. Uh, you know, and the ref was distracted, so ref didn't see it. And then he hit the spinning face buster for a three count. It was an odd looking different kind of move, but okay. I'm like, I've seen that before, and when you grab somebody by the head and slam them face down onto the ground, they should be pretty much done anyway. Yeah, I would, I would imagine so. So, okay, it just looked, it's just not what I'm used to from evil. So, it, it kind of just hit the eyes wrong. So, then we get to the main event. So, we got B-block action. Jake Lee versus Tetsuya Naito. So, early on, now, this match right here, good grief. I don't know what was wrong with both of them, but this was not well. Maybe something happened early on. I'm going to get into that. So, early on, Jake backs Naito against the ropes, and upon the break, Naito, he like he planned to spit on him, but then he got met with a preemptive forearm, and he got hit. It looked stiff, and like it knocked him goofy. And I say this because Jake Irish whipped Naito, towards the ropes and Naito stumbled down to his knees bouncing off the middle rope yes and he just looked like he was not there almost like if Goldberg threw somebody to the corner yeah 
and, Naito, then, and then when he's trying to move at points, it's like his legs are moving too fast for his body. Yeah, Naito got a certain style, but this was out of sync of that style. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, on the outside, you know, Naito was on defense from then on for several minutes. The outside, I thought Naito would get mainly the upper hand, but he couldn't. Naito eventually hits Destiny, but, the, but he pulled it. He got over. Then he just, it was weird. It's almost like he slowed down in midair and then dropped him safely, mm -hmm. slowly, kind of like a piff. It was weird. And the crowd's kind of like, uh, okay. You can hear them. They, they went from, yay. Uh. <laughs> you can hear it. And then Naito missed the leg fed MZ Giddy. He just yeah. fully missed. He got the leg up. It jumped, got, it and got just, close to his face, but he missed him. Yeah. And the commentary trying to save it is like, you didn't get all of that. No, he didn't get any of that. He got none of that. Jake tried some kind of fireman's carry move, but then he just paused. And then they dropped it to the reverse DDT and Naito got the pin. It was just like, what is that? The crowd was what, what, what's, what's going on? The crowd was so interrogative in the match. You just like, I mean, look, if the Japanese audience can't be polite enough to, 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 as I wrote, these two were completely off their game, and even the polite and respectful Japanese audience could see it. Yeah. They couldn't even cover it up. It was like, huh? Uh, yeah. It, it, it was just a bad night. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm hoping. Yeah, just a bad night, hopefully. That's what I'm hoping, because I know how Naito can get down. And, so do you. And, and Jake, he seems like a solid guy. He does. And both of both of, of Naito's Destinos look awful. And that, for my, because we weren't watching New Japan before this, but for us, this started on AEW for us. Yeah. If any of you out there have been watching New Japan before um, the title change with Goon on AEW, let us know if Naito was messing up the Destinos and whatnot, because even commentary, I can't remember what the dude's name is, Walter something. Walter so yeah, Don Callis Walter something. But <laughs> but he was like, Naito needs to get a new move. Yeah. He needs to do something else. Just something fresh. Yes, because Desino, not only one, you could say is scouted, but he's not he's not hitting it like he used to. Uh -uh. He's not. He used to do a full rotation and, and and it would end with him in a seated position. Now he's having to lay out. And I told told you a while ago, I said, you'll know when he's getting a little too banged up or losing his agility or something when he has to lay out with it instead of sitting down with it. Sometimes he sit with it. Sometimes he go a flat back bump with it. Now he's just laying out with it. Yeah. It's, it's not good. He's going to need something else. He got Destino over. That's nice. But with times change, you change. When your body says this ain't happening, Find something else. It's not it's not hard. And with a lot of moves that Naito are doing for setup moves for Destino and other stuff, he could turn those into finishes. So it's it's just up to him. Um and I had to note what had the chance to be a five star match, but regular main event, four star for the G one, you're gonna main event, you're gonna usually do a four star unless it's later on in the, the tournament. But this was drained into a two star match due to all the flubs, misses, and mis mistiming on both ends. This would have been better if Jake just got the boot kick in the corner because Jake had to immediately stop his offense for Naito to do anything. Yeah. He just had to cold turkey stop. So maybe they just need to, it ain't the rest, they need to get some evaluations going. Because I know that they're both better than this. You know, I don't have to see Jake. He's in New Japan Pro Wrestling. And New Japan usually is very picky about that type of thing. So we'll, we'll just have to see. I've got hope. I've got hope. But so far, G1 is still all right. It's still all right. So with that, this has been Cedric and Cedric for CR Wrestling Commentary on New Japan Pro Wrestling G1 Climax 34 Day 3. And with that, I want y'all to be cool, be chill, be safe. And we will see you next time. Probably screaming. Yeah. <laughs>